Good evening, and welcome to Hard Fire. I'm your host, Mark Axon, and it's my pleasure to spend another half hour with you for a discussion of contemporary events, current events, and politics from a libertarian perspective. Tonight, we will discuss the exciting presidential um, election, and we're very pleased to have two gentlemen who are running for the nomination for the Libertarian Party for President of the United States. My first guest is Jim Burns. Jim from Las Vegas, Nevada, is a longtime libertarian activist. And we're joined tonight by with Alden Link from Newburgh, New York, who is in the wheat grass juice business for 42 years. Gentlemen, welcome to Hard Fire. Thank you. Jim, why don't we start with you? Let's get right into it. Why are you running for president? Why would you be a good candidate? Well, I love to tell people about libertarianism. You take libertarianism, you can look it up in the dictionary. And it says that a libertarian is an advocate of the doctrine of free will and one who upholds the principles of liberty, especially of thought and action. That's just where you start. But libertarianism comes from the root word liberty. What we believe is that people should be allowed to live their lives as they choose so long as they don't violate the same rights of others. What it basically boils down to is being a good neighbor. You wouldn't uh, harm your neighbor, tell your neighbor what to do, steal from your neighbor, and we don't think that the government ought to do that sort of thing either. And the way you handle problems is uh, in a friendly manner and don't initiate force against your neighbor. Jim, when did you first become involved with the Libertarian Party? I discovered the Libertarian Party in September of 1973. That's a little bit long time ago. And uh, what makes you different from some of the other candidates running for president? Well, uh, I think that uh, what I'm trying to explain to my libertarian brethren is that uh, we need four things in order to institute a libertarian revolution, a second libertarian revolution. And we already have two of them. What we need is to elect the president of the United States, and we need 34 senators. We need a compass of libertarianism and a map of the Constitution. The last two are what we already have. What we've got to do is get the first two. The question is how much our Congress follows that Constitution or our President follows that Constitution. They don't follow it hardly at all. And what, we'd have, what we could do is if we had those four things, we could follow the Constitution. And if we did follow the Constitution, there would be more individual liberty and less government interference, less taxes, uh, more freedom. Thank you. Alden, can you tell me why uh, you're running for President? I'm running for president because I think uh, the country is unaware of, real, of the realities of the energy situation. I think they, they refuse to recognize the fact that we uh, are at war with uh, other countries than just the re rebels in um, Iraq. I think we should uh, be more concerned about uh, the individual liberties that are being taken from us by the things like the Patriot Act. And uh, I'm also unhappy with the United Nations, and I think that the United Nations should probably be moved out of New York to Somalia, and um, the city would be much better off with a gambling casino where the UN is. The whole th it's a terrific piece of real estate. I have to tell you that I would love to see that real estate used productively as opposed to uh, against American interests like it has been for my entire lifetime. Um, let me ask you, you mentioned the beginning, uh, you mentioned um, energy. Is that an important issue in your campaign? I think that everything that Jim spoke about is extremely important, but if you can't move, if you can't eat, then you, I think that, is, that, that energy it has to be considered the primary problem. We are running out of petroleum reserves. We are running out of air to breathe. The, um, the Gulf Stream is, uh, is slowing down because of the, uh, um, the uh, global warming. When the Gulf Stream stops moving, the ocean dies. There's nothing to eat from the ocean. If we try to make fuel from ethan to, out of corn for ethanol, we won't have anything to eat. Uh, you can see what's happened to the price of eggs. It went from a dollar a dozen and recently three dollars a dozen. But isn't a lot of that because of government interference in the free market? I think the government is pushing the wrong things. The government pushes the ethanol because they want to encourage the farmers who vote and they get money from the oil companies who, don't, who are not interested in, in anything except their short-term profits. So I think that we have to think long-term about energy and, and what we're going to do for the next 200 years. Okay, um, let's go back to uh, Jim and why you're running again for I, I would like to just disagree uh, in part that uh, uh, that we should have a governmental uh, energy policy. Uh, those people can't find their rear end with both hands. 
we shouldn't allow them to decide what energy that we use. We should allow the market to decide through price and uh, and you talked about the price of eggs going up. It isn't that the price of eggs is going up, it's the price of the money is going down. Who controls the money? Well, the, the government. Fed, the Fed controls the money. The government prints more money, they engage in counterfeiting. Just as it's wrong for uh, you and I to engage in counter counterfeiting because it steals from everybody, it's also wrong for the government to engage in counterfeiting. And that's what they do. That violates, that's not a good neighbor thing to do. And they're, they're stealing from us. It's a form of theft. How do we get the government out of the money business? Most people would say that if you eliminate the Federal Reserve, which I know is one of the things that, for example, Ron Paul has indicated that he'd be in favor, that the whole money system would fall apart. We need, we need the Federal Reserve because the banks are all tied into it, and then they would, all the loans would close up. We'd have not have any, any lending. Uh, we'd have massive foreclosures, et cetera, et cetera. So how can we just eliminate the Fed? Well, the, uh, the answer to the problem is the, to get the government out of it, and the, the way is not to get rid of the Fed. What you do is you eliminate the legal tender laws. And if you have uh, people competing with uh, currencies, the good currencies will drive out the bad. Who would uh, want to uh, use a currency where they counterfeit it all the time? as the, uh, the current currency we use. If you eliminate the legal tender laws, then um, people can compete with currencies and um, the sound currencies will prevail. What about a couple of other issues? Alden, I, know. I would like to comment on that. Sure. We had that system probably 150 years ago where the banks printed their own currency. There was chaos in the marketplace. If a bank failed, the currency would be worthless. And now you were stuck with a lot of money that had no value. But wouldn't the, wouldn't the investors be able to weigh the risks and say, okay, well, Citibank is a strong investment, so I'll go with them, whereas the, the bank of Mark Axon is a weak bank, so I won't go with him? Well, except, except that Citibank, which was a strong bank, was so far has ten billion dollars worth of bad loans in these home in these home thing, um, home and uh, mortgage investments, and and instead of instead of um, being able to bail themselves out, they've had to go to foreign investors in order to bail out the bank. Mm -hmm. I, I think the chaos in the money marketplace is a serious mistake. What the, about the reason? The reason, of course, that you have this chaos is because it's regulated by the government. If you, if the government provided shoes for people and they were the only ones who provided shoes, we would all have shoes that didn't fit. Um, what we need to do is to have the marketplace solve these problems, and good currency would drive out bad. But, it would, but money is so vital to, to the economic Just like, system. Because but it's so vital, you have to get the government out of it because they can't find their rear end with both hands. No, that's they are incompetent. The they don't work well. So if, if everybody has their own currency and the good currency dries out the bad currency, what happens to the people who will hold all of this bad currency? They're what wiped out? What happens to the people who hold bad currency now? We're all uh, being taken advantage of. This uh, currency... There, this you were describing the egg uh, problem, the price of eggs going up. It isn't the price of eggs going up, it's the value of money going down. No, I beg to differ. The problem is that all the corn that is being grown is being turned into ethanol and is nothing left to feed the animals which provide the eggs and the, and the uh, corn. The issue on the ethanol though, isn't that because the government is favoring that particular use? The government has given price supports just like we did with steel at one point and just like we've done with many other things. The government says the government says we want to favor this particular use as that's, opposed to leaving it to the marketplace to decide. That's correct. So what the government has to do is stop listening to the farm states and stop encouraging the ethanol production and leave it to the marketplace and to get out of the permitting uh, obstacle, stop the permitting obstacle so that nuclear power plants can be built. So the government is in the way, but it, it is in the way that the oil companies would prefer and that the corn farmers would prefer, not the way that benefits the public. Alden, would you uh, support the right of an individual to build his own nuclear power plant if Absolutely. he wanted to? If he had two and a half billion dollars, I would certainly say so, yes. Because there are no, no nuclear power plants being built right because now, and that's a real problem. It takes at least five years to overcome the permitting obstacles to plant it, get a nuclear power plant, and then you have the public who doesn't want to live next to one. We're, we're, in fact, a nuclear power plant has a much lower radiation output than a coal burner. Mm -hmm. Jim, um, another area that uh, some of the bigger name candidates, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, have been talking about is how we're going to provide health care for all Americans. Not one American is going to go to bed without a chicken in his pot and adequate health care. 
Would you like to comment upon that? Yes. What happens is the government causes a problem, and then they see that the, the problem hasn't been solved, so they um, create more solutions which cause more problems, which cause more uh, solutions by them, and it's a never-ending process until they want to take care of take care of us from the cradle to the grave. This is like what, Harry Brown's line about breaking your legs and throwing you a crutch. Yes, uh, and it's, it's, it's not a good idea. Uh, what, uh, what we need to do is have less governmental regulation, regulation about, uh, uh, about the uh, field of medicine. For example, uh, I was in the Marine Corps, and we hardly ever saw a doctor. What you do is you saw a corpsman and he was uh, about equal in rank to me but he had a little bit of training and and by and large he took care of you and the and the people who are young uh, I remember when I was young we never had any insurance um, by and large the vast majority my dad never had any insurance until he got to be uh, uh, reasonably old um, the government creates these problems they they make the price of medicine artificially high and uh, people used to be able to take care of themselves they formed uh, uh, associations and they uh, uh, they took care of themselves. They uh, um, the block would uh, um, you know fifty or sixty people would get together and they would hire a doctor and and pay him a regular salary. And now we have a society where you don't even know the fifty or sixty people who live next door to you in the building next door. And but we have um, three hundred million people living mostly in cities, mostly dependent upon various government entities to take people, care of them. If people were allowed to voluntarily associate and come up with solutions of their own, they would be much better and, uh, and they would uh, uh, promote uh, individual liberty and, uh, uh, and solve the problem. All right, let's move on to another issue. Alden, um, there's a couple of issues where you differ somewhat with the mainline libertarian planks, and one of those areas would be with the uh, borders and security at the borders. Um, a lot of libertarians would say that we should have completely open borders, we should have freedom of movement across our borders, and we should encourage people to come into this country and open up a bodega or open up a, or, you know, work as a, uh, as a busboy and then a waiter and then maybe own a restaurant restaurant, send some money home to your relatives in Mexico, et cetera. What, what would be your concerns with that situation? Having, having people come to do work, which, which uh, native-born Americans don't seem to want to do, is important because we are competing with the third world. And particularly in manufacturing, there are a lot of small manufacturers who hire illegals currently because they work for, for third world wages, and, they are, and now these manufacturers are competitive worldwide. So it's an important factor in our life. However, there are people who come to this country who want to do us harm. And so we have to be prepared to interdict these people. And you just can't have an open border and have them, uh, and tell them, have them volunteer information about themselves. So you have to see who's coming in. And to be completely open, uh, the world is not, is not that way anymore. So you have to have control over who comes into the country and who leaves. But how do you, how do you exercise that control? You build a big fence. You made a big and, fence and, and you're gay. keeping people out. You're That's keeping correct. out people who, who are going to contribute to the society, just as your, re your relatives were probably immigrants to this country. Mine were immigrants to this country. Yes. And they, they started with nothing and built something. They came here to do good. And not everybody who comes here lately is here to do good. They come here to, to do us harm. And so we have to be able to find those people before they get in and do us harm. Okay, well, I don't know how we're going to identify which people are which. That's the, most people don't tend to wear a sign saying who they are. Um, with, the, with, the, uh, with computers being so, uh, having such vast amounts of information available to them, a lot of people are known, terrorists are known to, to the uh, government agencies, and they can be intercepted. And it's true, you're not going to get everybody, but if you take a ride on El Al, they interview you before you get on the airplane. They want to know what you, where you're going and why and who you are. Mm -hmm. And if you do the same thing at the border, you can, you can filter out a lot of people. There are ways to do that. Okay, Jim, let's move on to another subject. You and I are both members of the Libertarian Party. You said you've joined in 73, I joined in the 80s. Um, and in fact, we each had the privilege of voting for Ron Paul for president, I believe, in 1988. Mm -hmm. uh, you did, I did as well. There are a lot of people in the Libertarian Party who feel that it would be detrimental 
for anyone to be running for president when the Ron Paul for president movement has such a strong following right now. Um, I think I read uh, on the internet a, a letter that uh, one of the members of the Manhattan Libertarian Party wrote where she said that um, it would be much more effective for David to have one big stone in his slingshot than to be throwing lots of little pebbles at Goliath. So um, my question to you is, is it beneficial for, for you and Alden and George Phillies and Steve Covey and all the other people to be running for president at this time, or would it make more sense for the libertarian movement to get behind the individual who right now seems to be at the forefront of, of getting the freedom uh, message out to the public? If Ron Paul were to uh, pick up the mantle of the Libertarian Party, he could have it, and I would vote for him and support him. But if he decides to continue in the uh, Republican uh, primary, I don't think that he's going to win. And it would be a catastrophe to have uh, all this potential support for Libertarian ideas with no place to go after Ron Paul loses. So, but if Ron Paul wins, we have to figure out a way that uh, the Libertarians don't harm him, that they actually help him. And I have a strategy, if you look on my uh, website, uh, uh, www.jimburnsforpresident, with a F-O-U-R, uh, dot com, uh, I uh, outline a strategy where, where we could actually help Ron Paul to win the election if he were to receive the nomination. But if he does not receive the nomination, then we will fill up that vacuum that he will leave when he, uh, when he loses. Alden, do you agree? There seem to be a tremendous number of, um, I don't know, is it Generation Y? Who are the 20-somethings now? Are they Generation Y, X, Q? I'm not sure what generation they are, but a tremendous number of people who are finally interested in freedom and the freedom movement who, um, who are new to politics. And for whatever reason, Dr. Paul has, has energized them. Now, he's a Republican, which is certain, and, we, and we're libertarians, but should we be supporting him or should we follow Jim's advice and continue to run candidates of our own, even if that means separating the energies between us? Well, first of all, I don't think Ron Paul is a libertarian. If nothing else, he considers somebody who exercises their right of choice to be a murderer. That's definitely not libertarian. Also, I don't think he's a good candidate for president because he doesn't have an energy policy. And if we don't have a good energy policy, we are going to be up to our necks in trouble. We have to, we have to be able to be energy independent and not depend upon foreign energy sources. And if he doesn't have that policy, I, I can't possibly support him. I must say that uh, uh, I think uh, Ron Paul is an honorable man and do believe that he's a uh, uh, very, 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 very libertarian. Now, I might disagree with him on a couple of issues, but they're minor in comparison to what has been uh, offered. Uh, uh, let me put it this way. Ron Paul is the best Republican candidate since Barry Goldwater. Mm. Yeah, well, that makes him a good apple in a barrel full of rotten eggs, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I but concur. The uh, Republican Party stands for nothing. If it has a person like Ron Paul in it and a person like Giuliani, Giuliani or McCain, where do they stand? They stand for nothing. And the Republican Party has has a history of doing bad deeds. Well, they very, stand very for themselves. I think things. Giuliani is 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 a bit of a uh, power hungry uh, tyrant, and he he tends to stand for himself first and last. But um, he seems to be uh, on the wane. Uh, McCain is coming back and doing quite well now. But I think Giuliani's strategy of losing the first four uh, uh, primaries and sitting them out was probably very detrimental to his campaign. The only decent campaign, uh, the only decent candidate in this election. Uh, outside of the Libertarian Party is Ron Paul. I admire and uh, um, I would support his campaign if he wins. Uh, I, want, uh, I want him to win the presidency. But I don't think that he can win the Republican nomination. But if he does, God bless him. Uh, I'll figure out ways to help him. Alden, you mentioned Dr. Paul's position on reproductive rights. So um, just so I, I understand it correctly, I think his position is that it's not an issue for the federal government and that the federal government should not be involved one way or the other. That means that if certain states want to ban abortions, uh, that it, it, women would end up voting with their feet. They may have to go to California for an abortion if they can't get one in Utah. Um, is that correct? And would you support that, would be, that kind of free market system? That, that, that is my position also, that abortion is, or is not, nothing to do with the federal government. However, to consider it murder is not libertarian. It's now you are, you are putting your values on, 
on somebody else's rights. Well, there's about a th about a third of the libertarian movement are libertarians for life, it's a, which is actually pretty much mirrors the United States population to a large degree. It's not not libertarians are definitely split on this issue, as far as I understand it. I'm, I may be mistaken, but that's yeah. the way that I understood it. To there be. are there are libertarians on both sides of this this issue. Um, my personal stance is that I believe in a woman's right to choose, but I don't. Uh, I agree that it's a a uh, not a fe it should not be a federal issue. Uh, it should be decided decided at the state level. Actually, the best government is always the most local government, the government of of your block, as opposed to the government of your city or the government of your state or the government of the United States. So that we, you know, we're paying taxes that are supporting people in Wisconsin that are paying that are making rules for people in Arizona, et cetera. It's all over the block. There are many counties, not a whole bunch, but there are many counties in the United States that are still dry. In other words, where alcohol is against the I law. I try to stay out of those counties as well, much as too, I can. Me too, but, but uh, uh, it's not a catastrophe the way it was when they made it against the law nationwide. If you have just a few counties where uh, the 99.9% .9 of the people don't believe in it and don't use it, well, okay, we can get along with that. And we're not forcing it down everybody's throat. That's the one thing that I like is the live and let live philosophy of the libertarian movement. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody said, um, he who governs best governs least. Jefferson. And mm -hmm. Jefferson. And, and I think that that is the way that government should be organized. Um, how, how's your campaign going, Alden? Tell me, tell me what, uh, a little bit about the grassroots and what you're well, doing, well, what you have planned for upcoming events. I, I have gone to several events. Um, I find that I'm very well received at most of these things. Uh, in, in street corner campaigning, people look at my literature and they say, you know something, I would vote for you because you seem to be the only one who makes any sense about anything. Well, that's and terrific. And do you have a website that people can go to? I have a website. It's called linkforpres.org and um, it covers most of my positions and there are a couple of interesting sidelights if you click on the YouTube site and on the um, Sundance site you'll see my first flight of the airplane that I built and you'll see the pictures of my so that is, that's a Cessna one? Cessna 177. So that uh, no, the one that I, the one engine? that I, that's one airplane that I have. That's a commercially built airplane. But mm -hmm. I built my own airplane, which is a Zenair two-seat high short takeoff and land airplane. How long did that take you to do that? I did it in 10 years. That's incredible. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great job. And Jim, how's your campaign going? Well, I just started in the, uh, December. Um, took about th three or four months to put together my website with a friend of mine. And, and can you give us that uh, website address again? It's www.jimburnsfourpresident.com. Uh, okay, and um, you drove here from Nevada. So yes, I, I thank you very much for coming all the way to New York. I know you made some stops along the way, but yes. but uh, that must have been interesting to see different parts of the country and meet with different people along the way. Well, I haven't uh, traveled around a whole lot uh, until recently, and uh, I didn't book my reservations, but uh, uh, when I got to Houston, I was at this uh, this hotel, which I hadn't been for a long time. I usually go to motels, mm -hmm. and uh, I got to the desk, and the uh, recep receptionist said, you're on the 15th floor, and I said I hadn't been that high since the 60s. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, that's uh, now you're showing your age, unfortunately. Yeah, but we're true. all we're all uh, well, we're all nostalgic for when we were much younger and and more carefree. I am different from Bill Clinton in that I inhaled in sixties. Of yeah. course, I have not uh, partaken for quite a long time. But uh, uh, if you grew up in the sixties and you didn't. Uh, um, you just you I don't know what kind of person you were. It's a different time. Well, I, this is very terrific that you each have campaigns and that you're each uh, actively promoting the libertarian message. And if our viewers would like to get involved with the Libertarian Party, and in particular with the Manhattan Libertarian Party, we invite you to check out the website www.manhattanlp.org the official website of the Manhattan Libertarian Party, and there you'll find links to our newspaper, Surf City, to uh, uh, the National Party, to this wonderful television show, to the State Party. Again, that's www.manhattanlp.org. All right, gentlemen, we have a couple of minutes left. Jim, why don't you tell me what a Jim Burns presidency will look like? Well, on the very first day that I take the oath of office, I'm going to order all United States forces home in an economic and safe approach. I'm going to, on that very first day, 
I'm going to adopt a, a non-interventionist foreign policy, which includes free trade and the peace, prosperity, and progress that free trade brings. Mm -hmm. I'm going to abolish the personal income tax. I'm going to get rid of the uh, Department of Homeland Security. I'm going to get rid of the DEA, the uh, uh, FEC, the OSHA, and all the rest of the government but how, nonsense. How, how are the poor people going to take care of themselves if we don't have the government there to watch over individuals who are unable to take care of themselves? Who's going to provide for them? What made this country great was the freedom that we had. It wasn't the government intervention. Uh, the reason that we're uh, prevailing now is because uh, the reason we're so well off is not because of the uh, the taxes, but because of the innovations that the American people have made, the new industries. The uh, the technology I see in this, uh, this t television studio wasn't around uh, um, just a few years ago. Uh, they're making inroads all the time, which makes us all more productive. If we didn't have the government's burden on our back, we would all live in a world of peace and prosperity. And Alden, what would, what would a president see where under Alden Link look like? I think it would be quite different than one under Jim. If the war in Iraq is still on, I have um, a plan to win the war in six weeks, and we would win the war decisively, and, and the war in, Ira in Iraq is being funded by Iran. And so the, uh, you have to cut off Iran's oil shipments so they don't have money to um, fight the war and to give it munitions and money to all the terrorists. And you can do that in a gentlemanly way by blockading their ports so that they can't get any oil out and gasoline in, or failing that to just destroy their, their oil ports. Now, I know that doesn't sound very libertarian, but George Washington also was out to destroy uh, the, a lot of the British uh, properties and military when he was president. And I, I would have a hard time saying that George Washington was not a libertarian. Okay, well, I think most of us think that George Washington was a great president and a great libertarian, and I wish both of you tremendous luck as being in your quest. Thank you, Alden Link and Jim Burns, for sharing with us your vision and, your, and information regarding your campaign. And thank you, viewers, for spending your time with us tonight here at Hardfire. Please join us again next week for another exciting episode of Hard Fire. Hard Fire is funded in part by the Libertarian Party of New York www.ny.lp.org. Catering for the cast and crew of Hard Fire is generously provided by Da Vincenzo Restaurant, 256 Prospect Park West, Brooklyn, New York, 11215, 718-369-3590, www.davincenzorestaurant.com.